Okay, we're in Estero Corsa again, driving Col de Tannenkirk. Uh, this is a French countryside map. It looks like a rally stage and um, looks pretty treacherous. I've seen a few other people drive it um, and uh, I've given it a cursory look and it is not for the weak at heart. It should be a lot of fun. Um, so we're gonna drive this and uh, try to keep it on the road shiny side up. So, all of this Assetto Corsa driving has uh, got me really interested in what it takes to model a real-life road, a real-life region, and turn it into an Assetto Corsa map. And I have to assume it's approachable because there are a lot of people that do it. Not all of them do it incredibly well. Some do. But I was curious, so I started doing a little bit of research last night, just, you know, trying to figure out what the process looks like. And as it turns out, there are a couple of different ways. One is if you are a savant with a photographic memory and a tremendous skill and all the software necessary, you can just manually create and model uh, a 3D landscape. turn it into something that looks quite beautiful. I, I don't I don't know if that's common, um, but it is a way, right? You can actually uh, use the modeling tools and create the things you want. It's interesting. Uh, I think it's more likely though. Um, the other two methods. One is to use uh, mapping software. So um, the Google Maps has 3D representations of their maps um, and that's API accessible. You can you know, pull that data down for the area, region, road that you're wanting to turn into a map or a set of courses, for instance. Um, some interesting problems come along with that though. Uh, Google owns that data, so you either have to license it um, to create a commercially available or even publicly available driving mod um, using that data. Or you'd have to go a different route with that mapping data. Um, there's an open source, source mapping initiative that uh, exists that produces similar data to what Google Maps produces. Um, you have to do a little bit more heavy lifting around uh, processing that data so that the mapping software, 3D rendering software can, can use it. But it's another way to use mapping software, so it's a kind of a part B option for that particular approach. And then there's the third approach that I find interesting. Um, I find it more approachable and maybe even more enjoyable. Is to use uh, photogrammetry, which is uh, essentially using photographs to feed into the 3D modeling software to then produce your map. And the reason why that's interesting to me is because uh, in order to do this, you actually have to travel to where you're going to uh, create this map and, and collect it. So for like, if I, there are a lot of tremendously cool roads in Northern California that I know and I've driven and uh, think would be awesome maps for a set of course up, for instance. So I could, in theory, get uh, a 360 degree camera uh, mounted on my car and drive and collect images for, well, I would actually collect a video in high def that I would then pull images out of that video to then 
feed into modeling software to create my 3D map. Interesting. Difficulty in this is that um, I guess you have to have a photograph every 15 feet or so. And you want a 50 to 60% overlap of those photographs so that, you know, when you're modeling it, you actually have a really detailed picture of what you're looking at. It needs to be high res. Um, probably needs to be complemented with um, very, very high detailed uh, images of like buildings and structures and other things along the path. Um, and then you need to have the software necessary to correlate all those photos together so that the model can then make sense of it in an organized fashion and be able to tell, you know, what it's looking at in order to map. And it sounds like a lot of work. And it, this is, and I, the reason why I'm actually talking about this is I, I, I researched the process because I'm like, you know, there's some really incredible maps. This is a, an incredible map. I mean, just look at the detail in terms of what we're, what we're looking at, what we're driving on. This is, this is pretty incredible. And I, and I was, you know, what does it take to do this? Gives you a deeper appreciation for the modders that are spending the time as largely a passion project. Now, some of them do charge money um, through like Patreon, you know, subscriptions and other sorts of things, but rightly so. Um, you figure um, to do a 10 mile stretch of road requires something like 320 gigs of photos. It's like, you know, tens of thousands of photos. And then the processing time, I mean, we're talking probably hundreds of hours of processing time to generate the map, to render the map. So those little, you know, buy me a coffee icons on people's websites or Patreons that are asking for like a dollar a month or five dollars a month. Man, if it's a modder that's producing really good content, <laughs> that's cheap um, for what we're getting and the time it costs and the effort that it costs to develop that. That's uh, That's nothing. I wish I had the luxury of that kind of time because I think it would be a lot of fun to do that kind of a project. And maybe there are other approaches that I didn't uncover. Um, you know, I referenced about a dozen videos and uh, s some documentation and um, read through some of the tooling and stuff that's required. and pretty intense stuff. If there are other approaches to it, I'd love to hear about it. So if you are a modder and you're looking at this, um, I would love to just sort of understand the process. Um, like I said, there are some tremendously cool roads here in Northern California that I would love to see in a set of course. I'd love to drive them anytime, not just when I have the ability to and time to go out and take my car out for a spin. And there are roads that I think other people would enjoy as well.
Dude, that stopped the clock, so that's the end of the map. So, yeah, this was incredibly beautiful. A very lovely drive um, at sunrise. So, um, I hope you enjoyed that as much as uh, I did. And uh, definitely give that some thought. The difficulty of generating these maps is pretty intense. Um, sounds like a really fun process if you're technically inclined and have the tools and uh, um, resources available to do it. But um, if you don't, give a little respect to those that do, because this is pretty incredible and it's not easy. So soapbox uh, dismounted. Um, hope you enjoyed this and um, thank you for watching. Do appreciate you. Um, like, subscribe, um, provide me your comments. And if you are a modder and want to share your process, I would love to hear all about it. Thanks. See you in the next one. Spaß machen Rennsport.